one of the only things I truly worry about anymore is my own personal safety at my place of employment. And there is an inherent danger, an inherent risk in, in almost any job, but especially a manufacturing job. There's, there's an understood danger and risk in, in working in that environment. But to work in the environment and to try to survive in the environment that I work in is something that, I mean, it weighs on me heavier than almost anything ever has. And, you know, I, I pray every morning that God watches over me and the other people that I work with anyway, but I find myself more and more, you know, praying harder and, and more specifically, not, not just for myself and the people that, you know, the other people that work there, but for the people that are in a position to make decisions, to make it a safer place. And they're just not making those decisions. They're, they're making, they're making the economically advantageous decisions for themselves and the company at at the risk of of catastrophic injury or death to to the people that are that have to work in that environment and they're not it's not like they don't know they're being told repeatedly about safety issues and risks and they they choose to do nothing about it. They they choose to tell you it's 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 a situation we have to deal with. They choose to tell you that it's a temporary uh, problem and that they're working on a solution. But they've been working on a solution for several years now, and it just worries me. And we've had some close calls. We've had some things that almost happened. We've had some things where you know. A split second this way or a split second that way, you know, and, you know, I, I can't even think about what might have happened because it's it literally scares me to death that I feel sometimes that there is a very, very real possibility that I am not going to get home to see my family that night or that I'm going to be involved in an incident that makes it so somebody else doesn't get home to their family. And I've run out of ways to, to try to, to vocalize this, to try to communicate this to the people in a position to make these changes. And they, they, they smile and nod and pretend like they hear you, but they don't hear you. They just, they just want you to say your piece and they'll feed you some lip service and they can send you on your way and that way they can forget about it and, and you just go back to work and you just do what you do. And they just, they're, they're sitting there crossing their fingers and toes hoping that something doesn't happen because when it does, you know, it, it's going to be cataclysmic, not just for the people involved, but for the entire company. You know, those are the types of things that happen. The, the the lawsuits that come out of incidents like that are, the dollar amounts are astronomical. I mean, it ruins companies, it ruins families, it ruins lives, you know, and all because they don't want to spend a few bucks now to make it safer. And I, I don't understand it. And when... I am trying to let go and let God handle the things that I cannot control. One of them being the actions of other people. I cannot control the decisions that these people make or don't make. But in anger, anger has been an issue for me and I've let just about all of my anger go. 
or I, I sh should I say that God has taken most of my anger away from me, but this this is one of the few things that I just hang on to it because it's if I if I didn't get angry about it, you know, I'd have to really sit and think about just how dangerous this place actually is. And you know, equipment is is substandard. Training is non-existent. You know, they're trying to fit 20 pounds of crap in a 10 pound bag. And so, needless to say, we are out of room to, to do anything and it's hard to maneuver, you know? And as a, as a forklift operator, you know, I'm bumping into things. I'm, I'm and not, not on purpose, it's just there's no room to maneuver. Thing, things are getting damaged. Material is getting damaged at this point. And my fear is that one day it's not going to be material or equipment. It's going to be a person. And we're, we're, we're trying, not just myself, but many of us in the entire plan are trying to get it across to these people that this is unacceptable. But we don't know what to do. And people have called OSHA. People have called the fire marshal. People have called the hotline that takes it, you know, for the company that takes it outside of the, the, the plant that we work in and takes it to a corporate level. And still, you know, still nothing is done. And it just, it baffles me. It baffles me. And it, it and I've had to ask these people, I was like, do you, do you just want somebody to die? Is that what your end game is? Because, you know, to make a few extra bucks, is that your end game? That, that somebody loses their life, that somebody, somebody's mother or somebody's father doesn't go home? Somebody's husband, somebody's wife doesn't go home that night? And then, not to mention the other people involved, myself as a forklift operator, if I have to, if I'm involved in something that causes the death or, or severe injury of somebody, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Whether I'm at fault or not, I have to live with that. And they're okay with it. And I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And I just, I, I pray about it and I talk about it, but I don't know what to do. If anybody out there has any ideas, if they know somebody that works in a similar situation that has had to deal with situations like this and they, they, they know a better way to deal with it than I do or that we can't think of, just please reach out to me and let me know because we have got to do something because I am, I am scared to my core that one day... I'm not going to come home because of the lack of just an institutional purpose of lack of safety. I don't know how to word it. I don't know if I'm wording it right. I just can't even, I'm so frustrated by it that I can't even think about what actually the phrase is. It's, it's, it's an institutional lack of control. It's an, it's an institutional lack of caring on behalf of the company. And it's just, it, it's mind boggling. And, you know, the only thing I can do is, is, is work as safely as I possibly can and hope and pray that even doing that, and that's the problem, even when I do that, when I work as safely as I possibly can, and all of us do, all of us forklift operators work as safely as we possibly can, and yet things are still happening. We're not, we're not derelict. We're not, we're not disregarding safety. We're not, not, we're not, we're not just driving around, not paying attention. We are paying very close attention to what we do each and every moment of every day. And yet still things are happening and things are building. And I'm afraid of what they're building to. And it's just, if, if 